Autodesk University has just kicked off and the next three days are promising to be filled with new emerging tech, autonomous robots, fusion demos and updates, exciting classes and hands-on DIY builds. Hey there, I'm Will Donaldson and you're currently watching me hijack a YouTube channel with 48,000 subscribers. This thievery all came about when Hackster slid into my DMs. And while I have control of this channel, I want to show you all the exciting things that I find here at Autodesk University. Straight off the bat, I'm immediately intrigued by this booth here that appears to have some kind of Stormtrooper tech. Let's go check it out. So I'm here at the NavViz booth and I've just put on this LiDAR scanner machine. They've got two LiDAR scanners, one on my chest here and one on the roof of my head, as well as four surround cameras all the way around. All those sensors, they can uh, build a three-dimensional point cloud map of any building environment that can be exported into a lot of Autodesk's toolkits and integrated into design workflows. And overall, this gives about a three millimeter accuracy within uh, whatever building environment that you're working in. So really cool piece of tech. I can see what I'm looking at on the screen here display and just roam around freely with it. They've also got this handheld version that honestly looks like some kind of sci-fi weapon. It has just one LiDAR scanner and is a little bit more portable. A couple years ago, I made my own autonomous LiDAR robot with a sensor that was a little bit more primitive. It was limited to just a single planar view. The sensors that NavViz are using toss out beams in a 60 degree envelope, achieving full 3D point cloud coverage. Speaking of autonomous robots, I want to check out what Dusty Robotics has brought along with them. So this is Dusty Robotics. We bring all of your stuff in your digital model to the job site by printing it directly on the ground with ink. Using a fixed base station laser, the robot can track its position with sub-millimeter accuracy and create massive industrial floor plans while restricting errors to less than 1 16th of an inch. I mean, just look at how satisfying this I-beam placement is. Beyond just framing outlines, they can detail important reference information and even map out utilities routing, streamlining communication between teams of contractors. If this kind of robot inspires you, I encourage you to go check out the community projects on hackster.io. You'll find many DIY makers building their own autonomous robots and testing them out in their own living rooms. If you see something exciting, you can follow along with the build guides and create something of your own, learning along the way. But what is Autodesk University? Who is it for and what can be found here? This three-day event is in Nashville and it brings together users from all across the world to see the latest developments in all of Autodesk software tools. They've got classrooms, hands-on workshops, a simulated factory experience, and a ton of cool companies showing how they're using Autodesk software to develop new technologies. As a maker, DIY tinkerer, and hackster, I'm most intrigued to see the latest software developments in Fusion for mechanical and electrical design. Let's head over to some of the classes offered here at AU and see what we can learn. So I just got out of a class presentation on assemblies in Fusion, and while filming lectures doesn't make the most interesting YouTube content, I really want to share uh, what I discovered in that classroom. Education is one of the really big components at AU. There's literally over 500 workshops, classes, and experience packed into just three days. I'm currently back in my studio editing this video together and honestly, I'm really struggling with how to share and summarize so many different classes and learning experiences. I attended presentations on assemblies in Fusion, building a Nerf turret using both mechanical and electrical design tools, some sneak peeks into upcoming software updates, and experienced useful add-on applications to Fusion, like the Avnet app, which enables engineers to streamline their electrical design workflows and component procurement processes. I'll play with the Avnet app a little bit later on, but it's free to download from the link in the video description if you want to check it out for yourself. I don't really know how to tie all these learning experiences up and put a neat little bow on it, but fortunately, Autodesk filmed some of the classes and they'll be made available to watch online. So check those out or consider attending AU 2026 next year. 
As a little study break, I've come to this booth to take some selfies and have my portrait drawn. This picture bot snaps your photo, digitizes it, and then prints it out using a robotic arm. Spot the difference, it's a digital copy of me. Just like you can find autonomous robot build guides on Hackster, you can also find robotic arm projects. This is genuinely a great entry-level project to get started with robotics. Regardless of your experience level, I guarantee you'll learn something when browsing the Hackster website. And hopefully you'll be inspired to create something of your own. I could spend all day exploring the cool tech offered here, but as a maker, I really want to get my hands on something tangible that I can build for myself. So let's head into the factory experience and build our own multi-measure tool. The Factory Experience is an interactive activity that showcases how Autodesk partners use their technologies from 3D printing, CNC machining, and inventory logistics to create smooth and efficient production workflows. At the end of the Factory Experience, there's a full-blown assembly line with 15 separate stations, organized parts inventories, and a selection of tools. I got to assemble my very own multi-tool, which features an angle measurement arm with laser engraved Avnet branding, IMU base level, an RGB color reader, and a distance range finder. So I've been running around all of Autodesk University, but I haven't really had a chance to introduce myself to you, the Hackster community. Who am I and what am I doing with this camera going around to all these different locations at Autodesk? My short elevator pitch is that I'm a creative technologist who's been fortunate enough to work on some really fun projects from science museum activations to larger scale interactive LED sculptures and custom booths for corporate trade shows. Outside of this, you can also find me tinkering in my workshop, building silly little side projects and creating educational content on YouTube. Hopefully Hackster doesn't mind me stealing a few viewers, but what's the point in hijacking a larger YouTube channel if I can't encourage you to also go check out my videos too? Now that that shameless self-promotion is out of the way, I kind of want to go back uh, over to Daytron. I met Kyle yesterday and I didn't really get a chance to fully dive into it. And I want to go check out their machine because it has some really cool tech incorporated. They're using alcohol cooling, which I've never really considered as an option, but it totally makes sense. Kyle, good to see you. Good How's it going? Uh, what has Daytron got here at the moment? So Daytron bought our Neo Pro. Here at Daytron, we have an MQL system that sprays alcohol coolant. So it's spraying 100% alcohol, denatured alcohol in this case. And what's nice is it hits the part and hits the tool, evaporates and pulls out the heat, giving you better tool life. And the side benefit is you have no contaminated coolant to deal with. You have no contaminated chips with oil. You have clean, burr-free, surgically clean parts and chips that are really easy to dispose of. Amazing. Yeah. Would you be able to show us the touchscreen here yes. and uh, how it's used to, to home the machine? So it's all touchscreen, really responsive. And to set your zero point and, pro and program your Renishaw probing cycles, all you do is go into the touchscreen, the machine moves up to a safe height, right. and then you can just move the entire machine around with the touch of your finger. That's crazy, moving such a massive machine with yes. just your finger. So this is available across our entire lineup. So this okay. is definitely a 16 by 19 work area. Right. We have machines with a six, uh, 60 by 40 inch work area with the same technology. Awesome. Yeah. So in this case, you see we zoomed into our stock. I hit the draw and all I do is draw a square. It snaps around the stock. I move this part in hit go and you'll see our integrated Renishaw probe doesn't take up a tool position and now it's probing our stock. It's going to set zero and we're good to go. Yeah. Then you just hit play and you're able to make your part. Amazing. This is amazing. I know I want my own shot. <laughs> wow. Oh, awesome. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you, Absolutely. Kyle. Thank yeah. you. Speaking of cool metal fabrication, check out this drone brought along by the Autodesk research team. There's probably a ton of really cool internal tech inside of it, but I personally want to focus on those leg brackets. When building something like a drone, you're fundamentally battling against opposing design constraints of minimizing weight but maximizing strength. These legs were optimized for both using Fusion's generative design tool creating an organic looking form that maximizes strength while using as little material as possible. But this isn't all the Autodesk research team is working on. This next demo was something I personally tried to pull off two and a half years ago when I made a video about building a robot with ChatGPT. 
I was kind of able to get ChatGPT to generate an SVG file for the robot frame that could be laser cut, but honestly, it was really limping along in terms of CAD abilities. With AI tools continually evolving, I was interested to see how Autodesk is currently exploring the potential of AI as a collaborative tool in the design process. I got to see a demo in which a stand for a fan was generated based on a user-provided isometric sketch. The model took about 15 seconds to run and then returned five different potential options. Admittedly, some of the designs are better than others, but I really appreciate how an associated timeline is created for each, allowing us to go back and make modifications to the parametric design. This feature isn't currently available. It's, it's purely an active area of research for Autodesk, but it's really interesting to see what they're exploring. So I've been hearing a lot about the Avnet add-in for Fusion at Autodesk University 2025, and I kind of want to play around with it a little bit myself. Let's go grab a laptop and install it on Fusion and see what it can do. From within the app, I can pull up existing circuit schematics, giving me a huge jump start on future electrical designs. It also has the functionality to source components, filtering through availability, lead times, and dynamic pricing that even factors in tariff costs. This feels like a great companion to any electrical design work in Fusion. It's completely free to download, so click the link in the video description, test it out, and see how it can help in your own workflow. While at the Avnet booth, I picked up this DIY PCB guitar pick, which feels like the perfect segue to introduce Jeremy Cook, another Hackster Pro attending the event with me. Jeremy built this amazing 3D printed guitar that has beautiful RGB NeoPixel LEDs that really bring it to life. And you actually have a chance to win this very guitar for yourself. Hackster is running a giveaway with prizes including a year's license to Fusion, a custom built PC, and this very guitar. If you want a chance to win, simply follow the instructions in the video description. With that, we've reached the end of AU 2025. There's still so much left here to see that I feel like I'm only just scraping the surface. Fortunately, Autodesk has been making some recordings and they'll be posting them online. So if you want, you can go check them out from the comfort of your own home. If you've enjoyed this video, maybe you'll consider joining AU 2026 next year. Maybe, maybe I'll even see you there. But for now, I'll hand this YouTube channel back to Hackster. Actually, before I go, uh, all my socials, they're linked down in the video description. Maybe consider checking out some of my videos on YouTube, uh, my interactive art projects on Instagram, or my freelance client work over on my website. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll let you go for real this time. Catch you later. Bye.